everybody, this is Lorian Clausen, and so excited that you're here with us today. Happy Friday. Uh, with me is Ian Averly, and um, we're going to be co-presenting this session today. Ian, you want to jump on and say hello? Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. <laughs> All right. So we're super excited about this session. Um, Ian and I both are uh, big advocates of certification. And um, we both have different specialties. So I specialize in the Microsoft Office Specialist um, certifications. And Ian's wheelhouse is really the Adobe certification. So whether you're interested in either Microsoft or Adobe, um, you've got two people here who have taken, I'm going to guess between the two of us. I'm throwing out a number, but I'm sure we have 30 plus certifications between the two of us. We both have really dived into these. So we're really excited to share with you um, what we have learned along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first thing I want to talk to you a little bit about is what is the value of certification and how can that help you um, both personally and professionally. Um, from a personal standpoint, really certification is going to um, validate your technical skills. Uh, so, so many times in a particular program, you might even be asked in a class um, to showcase something, whether it's in Office or Adobe, and we think we know the program. Um, and uh, statistics say that we pretty much usually only know about 20% of a particular application. So certification is going to basically walk you through the process of a complete um, application and really show you all that's available for you and it's going to help you personally um, just so that you become more efficient in your work and it, so it will strengthen those skills and it does prepare you for advanced level courses. If you're already thinking eventually you want to do a master's, um, specifically I'm thinking some of the like the word expert exams, they can really help you in writing papers and um, knowing some of those shortcuts so that you can spend your time on writing and not necessarily on the technical tool. From a professional perspective, um, it's really going to enhance your opportunities when you start looking for internships and uh, positions. So um, I will tell you that we have a lot of students who may come to us because they have to take a certification for a course. Um, one of the courses that I work with in the business school, uh, Excel tends to be one of the primary certifications I'm seeing. And what tends to happen is a student sees that value in the certification and they come back and they say, hey, can I do any of these other applications? And they may get certified in four, five, six different um, programs because they recognize the value. Um, I've had students who have come to me and have said, uh, my certification is what helps me to get my job. So it can really boost your resume and really help you to set yourself apart um, once you have that industry standard certification. And really employers are, are looking for certification. You no longer can say, I know this program. I know it, the Adobe suite or I know the Microsoft suite. They want to know um, by facts that you actually do. And this is how you can prove that. So you're gonna see on this next slide, a um, number of different statistics here, all about hiring and um, what you might expect uh, once you have certification in hand. And the one that I wanna point out to you is really down here. 50% of individuals are more likely to be hired full time with a 10 to 15% higher wage when they have certification in hand. So uh, definitely there is value in certification. Employers are looking for that. And um, I've worked with our career center and they've told me uh, previously that they always love hearing about the students who have gone the extra mile to get certification and try to help showcase those students um, if they have those in hand. So at SME, we have two different programs that we offer. Uh, one is certification offered for Microsoft Office, and the other one is the Adobe Suite. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the Microsoft Office certifications, and then Ian will um, 
take you through the Adobe certifications. Um, if at any point you have any questions about um, the certifications, feel free to pop those in the chat. We also have a Q&A at the end and uh, we will open that up for questions for you as well. Okay, so um, basically what exams do you offer and how do you get started? That's what I wanna talk about on the Microsoft Office certifications. We offer Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, and Outlook. And I'll tell you that Word and Excel have two exams. They have a core exam and then there's an expert exam. There's no cost to you as a student, so IT pays for this, and we even pay for practice materials for you. Um, I'll tell you, if you had to pay for it yourself, it would be about $110 for the exam, and then about throw in another $50 for the practice materials for each application. Um, the exam, uh, you could take you know, one, or you can take as many as you want, um, we do provide you practice materials and we will let you come and test with us for free. The requirement uh, for the, um, to sit with us for an exam is to take that practice test. The practice test very much uh, reflects what you would expect um, in the exam. And I'll show you a snapshot of that in a minute here, but it is a project-based um, test. So you'd have uh, anywhere between five to seven projects, and then you have five tasks for each project in the particular application that you're wanting to test for. It's a timed exam, and um, in addition to the Gmetrics practice exams, I don't know how many of you might have been on my webinar yesterday for LinkedIn, but LinkedIn does have certification courses um, that go hand in hand. So if you, for example, you like the practice test and there is a training mode and a testing mode that you can do, but you maybe stumble on one particular item, you have the ability to go to LinkedIn, you can watch a video or two on that one item, get the prep that you need and then continue in the practice exam. And then there's also some Microsoft courseware for the Excel expert. I do have an online book that's available as well. Um, students do have to earn certain uh, proficiencies for classes, and you can earn your information literacy proficiency uh, with us for taking one of these exams. And if you wanted more information about that, you could email us at ittraining at smu.edu and we could walk you through that. Okay, so, uh, Here's a sample of the practice test. Now I will tell you this practice test is a requirement to sit with us for the exam. So essentially what you would do, um, and we'll, we'll show you uh, the link for the website, but we do have a website where you can uh, access a Gmetrics uh, access code, and we give you all the information how to download the software. I will tell you that um, if you have a Mac, um, we will want you to utilize our virtual environment so that you can actually not download software. It doesn't work on the Mac, um, but you would go to a, a virtual environment and log in and utilize the PC test because it is a PC exam. And this is a sample of what Gmetrics looks like. Um, and you'll see here at the bottom, we have basically a little taskbar, and at the top we have our snapshot. And this is, of course, is Excel as our example here. And you can see that we have four out of five projects. So I told you that um, some tests have five projects, some have seven. Uh, so here's an example of a test that had five projects. It's time, so it would show you the time. And then you have some items over here on the far right. So the summary would be, if you wanted to go back at the end of the test and see all of the questions and, and jump back to one, you could access that from the summary. You do have um, an option to restart a project. And here, for example, we're looking at a particular project. We see an overview. So the overview tab would tell me just a little bit about what to expect in that project. And then I would have five tasks right next to it. And they would tell me um, each task. Once I've completed a task, I can go ahead and mark that task complete. 
or I can mark for review if I don't know how to um, perform it at that time and then later go to that summary. If, for example, I've started a project and maybe I'm the first task or the second task in and I realize I made a mistake on multiple questions, I could um, select this restart project and start that particular project over. When I'm all done, I can save the project. So maybe I don't have a full 50 minutes to study, but I do have you know, a good 25 minutes. I wanna start working on it. I can save it and then come back to the test. And then when I've completed that test in its entirety, I would select grade project. Now there's two modes for G, G metrics. There's a training mode, and then there's also a testing mode. The training mode um, walks you through a particular task. So for example, in this case, this question is asking us about a slicer in Excel. Well, you might not even know what a slicer in Excel is. So if, for example, you weren't sure how to accomplish that, there would be, if you were in the training mode, and we're currently in the testing mode, right next to this last task five, there would be um, essentially a big light bulb here. You could click on that and it would show you exactly how to perform those actions. And uh, basically that's a good way to learn and just learn by repetition. When you're all done, of course, you'll grade the project and your goal would be to score an 800, which is essentially an 80 on the test. You only need to have a 70 um, to pass the certification exam but uh, we want you to be prepared and we've had a 90% success rate when students come into our office ready to test and they have completed with a 80 or higher on the practice exam. So this would be the first step to get started. Ian's gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hand over the mic to him. He's gonna walk you through the Adobe um, aspect and then um, we will provide you the links, uh, how to access the practice code or the educational materials. So uh, Ian, I'm gonna go ahead and hand that over to you. Thank you, Lorraine, I appreciate it. And, and thank you again for everybody attending today. We really do appreciate you taking your time out to find out about the, the great benefits of certification here on campus. So uh, today I'm gonna be talking about the Adobe Certified Associate or the ACA, uh, that's the program that's done for certification for the Adobe suite of software. Um, Lorraine, if you can go ahead and advance the next slide for me. So much like the Microsoft Office certification, the Adobe certification um, has, is a test-based cert, uh, cert, certification test um, that's 15 minutes in length. And what it does is provide you both questions and where with a multiple choice option and then realistic scenarios where you actually will work with the software, say Photoshop, and go through um, if you had like a client and they're asking you to do these or a supervisor or something, it's like, okay, I need you to go ahead and take this text here, make it green and change the font to be Helvetica. You will actually have to do those steps within the Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, any one of those tools. You'll actually have to go through those steps and meet those goals that are being asked of you um, for each one of those. Now, unfortunately, we do not have G metrics for the Adobe certification, so we recommend two ways of kind of learning and getting yourself up and ready is the Adobe study packets, which are available on the Adobe's um, Education Exchange website. There's a whole section of stuff and resources there from um, practice tests to uh, questions and uh, example questions. And then there's also a large group of video tutorials available on LinkedIn Learning. And since we already have that available to us, um, all you have to do is just go to smu.edu slash LinkedIn, log in and just search for Adobe Cert Prep. Um, and that will pull up the classes that are specifically designed for getting you prepared for taking the Adobe certification. Lorraine, can you go ahead and bet to the next slide, please? So this is an example of one of the 
multiple choice questions that you would see on the actual test. Now, there's usually about 10 questions that are like this. So it will be anything from how to um, deal with copyright issues for uh, or something like this, where you're matching a term with the definition. And so all you would do is just click on the left hand side item, drag it over into the right side area and match those up. Nice, easy, um, great thing. Uh, next slide, please. And here is a actual task that you would be asked to perform within Photoshop. So um, you will have on the right hand side, it will tell you, ask you to do something in this. And so then you'll go over on the left hand side and you'll actually do the example. So it could be anything from uh, select a bear from the background to change the background color to blue, or um, in this one, um, it's going to ask you to um, deal with the bear's eyes, and so you'll fix the bear's eyes um, as the task. And now you do have to be careful because it'll do things like name the layer eyes. Um, if you do not type in the right answer, <laughs> you'll name it like blue eyes or, um, you it'll be you'll miss the title case. Um, it will you will lose points for that. But the nice thing is you're in the program, and so even if you don't know the exact answer or exactly how to get there, um, you know you can kind of click around. You have a little time that you can kind of click around and say, oh, okay, I need to add a new layer, and I can do that from. Um, layer, new layer, or I can come over to the layers palette and click there and then add a new layer there. So you're in the actual tool. So you do have, um, you know, you can just kind of sometimes fumble around to find the right answer. But as long as you get to the end with the correct answer, it counts. So uh, next slide, please. All right, so we have um, several options for the Adobe Certified uh, Associate. Um, so instead of just saying you're certified in Adobe Animate, um, Adobe comes up with these really long titles. So web authoring using Adobe Dreamweaver, print and digital media publication using Adobe InDesign, digital video using Adobe Premiere Pro. So they have all these, uh, <laughs> instead of just say Adobe Certified Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, right now though, they're going through a whole rebranding and kind of changing um, the way, the names of their certification. So, uh, up to this point, they're Adobe Certified Associates, but uh, soon they'll be called Adobe Certified Professional. Um, that'll be the new title. So as long as you get certified with um, a version of Adobe from 2018 to now, um, you'll automatically be granted the new title. Also, what they have available too is the Adobe Certified Professional in Visual Design or Adobe Certified Professional in Web Design or Adobe Certified Professional in Video Design. And these are offered if you pass the certification test in multiple Adobe applications. So if you get a um, certification in Adobe Dreamweaver and then get Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Animate, you will be um, get another certification automatically for the Adobe Certified Professional in web design. Uh, it used to be that you'd have to do complete three certifications, but when they roll out this new um, Adobe Certified Professional, it'll only be two. So if you are already um, very familiar with using Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro, I highly recommend just go ahead and get both those certifications and you'll automatically get the um, upgrade to the Adobe Certified Professional. Now, I also wanna tell you too, uh, that I would not wait too long. So we are doing our Adobe certifications until April 22nd. Um, after that, uh, we will not be offering any Adobe certifications until the fall. So um, we're just trying to make sure we get um, these all taken care of uh, before finals and everything like that. So you do have a little time to get the certification, but I would not uh, uh, 
dilly dally and try to get this done as soon as possible. So um, again, April 22nd is that deadline. So if you already feel familiar with those, go ahead and get those red shirt and uh, get that certification. Okay, I think we're ready for the next slide, which I think takes us back to, there we go, showing off your success. I'll let Lorraine take it over again. All right, Ian, thank you. Um, I just want to reiterate something Ian said before I move on about that April 22nd deadline for Adobe. Um, the Microsoft certifications, we offer those throughout the summer, um, but Adobe is brand new to us and we're just getting up and running. And so um, we will have a little bit of a lapse before that program uh, starts again. So definitely keep that in mind if you're interested in the Adobe certifications. Okay, so we've walked you through the mechanics. What's the certification about? How do you get started? What to expect? But what happens when you get certified? Um, because really uh, your whole goal is to be able to showcase that. We want you to stand out and be seen. So when you uh, receive your certification, the day that you get it, and at least for Microsoft, Adobe might be, you know, might take a day or two on those. I'm not as familiar, but very soon after you get tested, let's just say that, you will receive a digital badge. Um, if you have a LinkedIn profile, that's something that you can put up as kind of a new status. Um, and you can utilize that uh, and insert that digital badge, upload it to your LinkedIn profile, uh, let people know that you've accomplished that. Um, I've also seen people take these digital badges and they put them on their email accounts. Uh, so if you're writing to professional uh, writing, um, you know, professional emails, looking for positions, uh, you might want to have that badge on your email account. You'll also get a, cert a certificate um, that you can print out, you can hang that up, um, display that if you want. And then finally, the, the to me, the biggest bang for the buck is right here. Um, so you will get a code that uh, basically validates that you got that certification. So I'm showing you here, it's a license number. And you can put that in the certification section of your LinkedIn profile. Um, and then uh, at employers, they are looking at those certification sections and that would be just something that you would be able to utilize. On the right side of my screen, you'll see a sample digital transcript. So the other thing that you get, and I really love this, is that you'll get access um, to a digital transcript and you'll have a custom URL that you can tell employers, okay, I have this, I have this URL, here's your custom access code to go see my transcript. And it just shows all of the certifications that you have. The reason that I love this is because we know that oftentimes you're asked to turn in both a cover letter and then your resume. Well, you can include in your cover letter, um, here's a URL for you and it shows you all of my certifications and you can get to your certifications before they even get to your resume when they're first reading your cover letter. So uh, that's something I really like and you'll have that available to you. And now really what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and talk about um, how to get started. So, uh, if you're interested in this program, we sure hope you are. You want to visit smu.edu forward slash certified. And we have links on that web page, um, study resources, uh, both for Adobe and Microsoft um, Office. If you are interested in Microsoft Office exams, you do need to utilize Gmetrics. And on that very first page, there is a big blue button that says get a Gmetrics access code. And we want you to go ahead and access that. Um, and then it, you will receive an automated email from our help desk. It tells you all about how to either download that software or use our virtual environment. You want to keep studying and make sure you score that 800 on a practice test. And then finally, uh, you can register for the exam by going to smu.edu forward slash register blast. So really everything that you need is on that one site. And again, it's smu.edu certified. Um, and Ian, would you mind throwing that in the chat so people can have that link? 
And what I want to do now no is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open it up uh, for questions. And if you have questions, you can either populate them in the chat. Um, I wrote down a few notes, Ian, while we were talking uh, as we laid on questions of some things that students might be interested. But if you have any questions, you can go ahead and read them off. Okay, so we do have a question. Uh, must we register for CertiPort? Yes, you Excellent actually, question. You do need to register for CertiPort um, and create a CertiPort account. However, you don't have to do that right away. So when you register for your exam, we'll send you information. And that's one of the things that we actually um, do walk you through is the instructions on how to do that. All right. All right. Um, okay. So another question we have is how long does the certification stay valid? Oh, do you want to speak to the Adobe one? Yes, <laughs> I'd be happy to. So yes, so the Adobe ones are valid for three years. Um, and the reason for that is they want to make sure that you um, stay up to date with the changes in the software. So um, once you get certified, you can do that. Now, I will tell you that, it, you know, I mentioned earlier where you can get, say, that um, Adobe Professional Certification in Web Design. Um, the caveat to that is that your test, your certification has to be in the same version of the software. So if you got uh, certified in Photoshop 2018 and then got certified in Dreamweaver 2020, um, those would not be valid to get that new certification. So um, I personally experienced this where I had gotten all my certifications, but my Photoshop was newer than the other ones. Um, and so what I had to do is retake certify the uh, Photoshop in an older version of the software um, and get certified in that. Uh, what about uh, for the Microsoft, Maureen? Yeah, so the Microsoft ones don't expire. However, um, I would say you want to keep them current. So if you have a certification from 2013, probably time to certify in the 2019. Um, I think if you're one version behind, not too bad, but I definitely wouldn't be more than one version behind. I had a few other things I wanted to share, Ian, um, that I just realized um, is we didn't cover where testing is. So if you're wondering where testing is, um, we do offer both testing in person and online. Um, if you are a student and you chose the SMU Flex option, then you're gonna be required to take um, the SMU Flex test with us, which is coming to the library. Um, if you were sick or you were quarantined, you could contact our office. Certainly we're gonna work with you so that you can get an online test. But uh, most students are coming to the library and testing in Fondren Library 109 or 110. Um, and then we do have limited remote options for those students who may have chosen um, their remote designation. And the other thing that um, I wanted to mention um, is that because of the Microsoft exams also include the practice test, uh, and we do have that requirement for the 800 to be able to sit with us, um, I often get, what, what happens if I don't pass? If you don't pass, don't sweat, you'll get an opportunity to take the exam again with us, I have no charge. So IT provides the first two certifications um, for free, but because we do provide you a plethora of study materials, um, we only allow the first two for free. If you needed to test um, beyond uh, the first two, uh, there is a charge, it is $50. And um, I will tell you though, if you are faithfully studying, utilizing the practice exam um, and Scoring that 80 or higher, you're going to have a very high success, a high chance for success. So I really wouldn't worry about that too much. Ian, did we get any other questions? 
No, I'm not seeing any other. Oh, here we go. <laughs> One just popped up. Uh, does geometrics solely provide testing materials? Can we also test on geometrics? So geometrics is not the sole provider for practice exams. Um, there are other materials out there. Again, we mentioned LinkedIn Learning, and I'm sure there are other, other ones. Um, but the, the actual test itself will be through CertiPort. Um, and it's very similar to the geometrics practice exam. It won't be the exact same questions, but uh, you'll be very well prepared for it. But you will, to actually earn the certification, you'll be testing through CertiPort on campus. Okay, we have another one. Uh, what would be the best time, freshman, sophomore, senior, et cetera, to get the certification since the certification is only valid for a certain amount of time? Okay, um, I can answer that a couple of different ways. But uh, the first thing is, let's. I'm gonna use the business school example and I'm specifically speaking from a Microsoft perspective. Um, I'll let Ian maybe jump in here after if he wants to add anything to it. I don't think there is that you should wait to take it. Um, I will tell you that we have a number of classes on campus that require it. So while it's optional, um, there are a number of classes that require it. And what I'm finding is um, even when we've done like the arrow um, orientation in, in the past, I've had students come and take it very early on. And then they find later that they may have a class that requires it. And as long as I can provide that certification validation to their professor, then they don't have to take it in the class later on. So specifically, if you're a business major, I would go ahead and start studying for the Excel exams. You're likely gonna get at a minimum the Excel associate, but if you're looking at accounting or some of those advanced um, business classes, it's likely that you might be asked to do the Excel expert as well. Ian, do you have any thoughts on Adobe? Yeah, I do actually. Um, so the, the kind of, you know, any time is the best time, but I'm going to say the best time is probably before you start doing any of those interviews for internships and stuff. Uh, what a great thing to have in your bag of tricks when you go do that interview to say, you know, oh, you know what, not, yeah, I can do that, but I'm not only, Am I saying that I am actually certified in this? Um, it's just one great thing to kind of give you a leg up when you're doing that um, interview. I mean, the one of the simple ones too um, that I'd recommend for anybody is the Microsoft um, Outlook certification because that is the email program that's used by most businesses, and so um, it's a very uh, well, I'll say, I'm going to say it's an easy one to pass um, since I passed it. Uh, so, um, but it, it's a great way to kind of say, you know, you know, you're ready for the business world that you can go in and go, well, yeah, I, I can do that. But I'm also even um, certified in Microsoft Outlook. Um, if you go for design position, you can walk in and say, look, I'm Adobe certified in web design or in uh, visual design, um, it really is a, a great way to make yourself stand out from the rest of the crowd. Uh, Lorene, we have another question for you though. Um, are Excel associate and Excel and expert certification separate? Do we have to take one before the other? Okay, I, I'm gonna answer this question. I also wanna go back to something Ian just said before I forget. <laughs> So um, he mentioned Outlook, and I just wanted to kind of bring you all in on the conversation I had with our career center um, director about a year ago. And one of the, in, in a conversation I had with her, she told me that employers are, are telling her often students come out of uh, graduating and not knowing how to use Outlook. And so that was one specific skill that they were looking for. So I just kind of want to um, piggyback on what Ian said. Outlook certification is definitely one that you should think of. Um, so just want to promote that. Um, the Excel Associate and Expert certifications, do you have to take one or before the other? So yes, they're separate. There's two different levels. So you kind of want to think of it as a core level and then the advanced level. Um, you can take one 
or you can take both and you actually don't have to take one before the other. Um, if you're, you know, if you are very proficient in Excel, um, one of the things you could do, you could go to our website, again, smu.edu certified, and we list the exam objectives on the website. You could go look at the exam objectives and see kind of where you are. Um, and if you, you know, let's just say you're someone who's been in Excel for an awful long time, you're pretty sure you're proficient and you want to try the advanced, certainly you can. Um, you can do that without doing the core level. I do know students who have never taken the core and have taken the expert. Um, but if you're a new, uh, kind of new to Excel, I just start at the beginning and, and uh, earn both of them. Because honestly, I will say in every exam, you're gonna learn something. So even if you think you're really proficient, I guarantee you, you're gonna pick up a trick in that first level that you may not have known about. All right, um, any other questions? Yeah, I'm not seeing any more questions, but if you have something, now is the time. All right. Just give, give it another minute or so. Uh, feel free to type in the chat. Otherwise, again, um, our email is ittraining at smu.edu. And then our website is smu.edu forward slash certified. Oh, here we go. We just got one that popped in. Uh, is there a code that we must use to take the Adobe certification exam? So um, when you register for a cert report and register with the SMU.edu slash register blast, uh, we will go ahead and um, when you're ready to take the test, we go ahead and enter in um, the information as a proctor. And so you don't need to remember a code or anything to take that certification exam. It's done here with us. That's correct. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. That's perfect, Ian. You won't have a voucher or anything like that. Um, you'll just register and we'll get you all set up. Okay, well, feel free to reach out to us at ittraining at smu.edu. And then when you're ready to schedule your exam, you'll go to smu.edu, register BLAST. I will tell you we are loading exam dates today. So I'm not sure if there's anything up right now, but uh, by tomorrow there will be. So um, if you don't see anything this morning, uh, just give us a few hours. We are doing that today. So thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank you very much. We do appreciate you all taking your time out to join us today.